So recently, I reached out to a company called Upi to find out information on their latest product release, which in this case was one of those Groten style enclosures for Ender 3-ish size 3D printers, and they graciously sent me one of them to test out and review before the product is even launched. So if you're not aware, Upi is an online retailer that is primarily a Creality parts distributor, but also sells other products such as hot ends, resin printing accessories, and their own branded accessories like multi-spool filament holders and enclosures such as this one that makes its debut on Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. Inside the box, there's the insulated outer shell and assembly instructions. The fiberglass rods that are numbered from longest to shortest. And the push to connect center couplers and three point angle brackets that make up the frame. And also a five volt LED light that is powered by what I can only assume would be a phone charger or similar wall plug. There isn't one included, so I have to look into ways to power it. The assembly is pretty straightforward and there's an instruction sheet that comes inside of the box. And there's also a QR code that you can scan to bring you to a web page that has a video on how to assemble. But ultimately it just boils down to taking two rods of the same number, adding a center coupler between them, and pushing the other rod in to connect. Once you're done with that, you take the three point connector and you add them to the ends of the long rods and get ready to assemble the rest of the pieces. Here's what the frame skeleton looks like after assembly. From here, it's just a matter of unfolding the outer shell and placing the frame inside of it. The shell fits snugly around the frame, and you don't want to put too much of a side load on the fiberglass rods or connectors, as you could potentially crack one during assembly. Just take your time getting the frame inside the shell, and it will all come together eventually. And here we see the final product with the outer shell on top of the frame. Now it's just a matter of putting the printer inside of it, powering it up, and seeing what's what. The power cable comes out of this little bung on the back, and there's an accessory flap on the side that could be held open with a Velcro strip on the outside for ventilation or attaching an air filter. In my case, I'll be running a USB cable through it. I would have liked to have seen more bung holes around the outside, but Upi said that they're open to suggestions for product enhancements in the future. And finally, there's a tool bag on the right side for holding some tools for quick access like snips or a scraper. I'll start off by inserting the power cable through the bung hole, giggity giggity. I put my Elegoo Neptune 3 inside the unit because the Z-axis is higher than my Neptune 2, and as you can see there's still plenty of room inside the enclosure, but the width is still pretty workable on the table. The 5 volt light attaches to either the front or the back rod of the enclosure with these little clips that are supplied with the unit. The cable is plenty long and there's a power switch on it that can be turned on and off from the outside of the enclosure. I decided to install the light on the front rod and run the cable through the accessory flap on the left. Had I used the rear rod, I could have put it through the bung hole with the power cord. But here I have it run down the left side, and I've got it plugged into my Big Tree Tech Pad 7, which should provide adequate power for the light. And if it doesn't, I can always plug it into a USB charger and it would power the unit. So here's what the inside of the enclosure looks like with the LED light turned on. You can see it casts a good amount of light on the inside, and the reflective sides of the enclosure make it shine that much more. Here you can see a more up close and personal view of the printer inside the enclosure with the front flap closed. There's more than enough light being provided by the included LED that I wouldn't even have to run my side lights during setup and printing. Like I mentioned, I'm running it off of the USB coming off the side of my BTT Pad 7, but if you didn't have one you would just use a phone charger and everything would be fine. You can see the machine moving around quite clearly. The only thing that I would suggest is maybe taking a hair dryer or a heat gun to the front flap and kind of smooth the plastic out a little bit. But other than that, you can see inside of it quite well. I'm just doing a quick bed level and then I'm going to run some tests on some PETG and see if I get any kind of corner curling or anything like that. So now I'm running a test print with my side lights and the included LED turned on. The reflective inside is really great for seeing what's going on, and I could tell already just putting my hand near the enclosure just how much heat this thing is holding inside of it. I would definitely say that this will help immensely for any ABS printing I would have to do on my Stealth Burner build if PETG doesn't cut it. So far, I'm pretty pleased with the setup. So I took a couple of readings inside the room with my infrared thermometer, 
And the table surface and all of the walls were pretty much the same temperature, 24.5 to 25 degrees Celsius. And right here, you can see the difference in temperature just after probably about 20 minutes worth of printing. At the end of the print, it was just over 40 degrees Celsius, which is great because this proves how much heat this thing retains. And here's the print result at the end. I used the cheapest and most mishandled PETG I had on hand, and the part adhered well with no signs of lifting. The overall finish is also pretty good. So my takeaways on the UPI enclosure are that it provides draft-free printing, but you do have to leave it open in situations where you're using PLA or PLA plus or any other type of filament that would require a lower temperature print because it does retain a lot of the heat that is generated from the printer itself. There is a lot better heat retention for PETG, ABS, ASA, etc. As seen in the previous clips, the enclosure temperature can get up to around 40 degrees Celsius without any kind of secondary heating. The printing is much quieter because it's inside the enclosure, and the enclosure itself is actually quite thick, so it does calm down the noise quite a bit. The fireproof material of the enclosure gives you a peace of mind that you can leave your printer unattended for an extended period of time, and chances are if it were to catch fire, it would smolder out quickly inside of the enclosure. The included LED light is plenty bright for quick viewing. It runs on USB power or a charger cube. The one thing that I do wish it had more of were the accessory bungs for running clipper pads or externally mounting the original HMI that came with the printer. And there is no included power supply for the light, so you need to provide your own. But at the price point that they're selling it at, if they were to include it, it would bring the price up another 10 or 15 bucks. So that'll pretty much conclude this video. If you liked it, throw it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure you do so. And if you really liked the video, share it with your friends because sharing is caring. If you're interested in getting yourself a UPI enclosure, check out my affiliate link in the description below and use the special coupon code down there to get 20% off of your order. And even though it's nothing more than a bunch of the same stuff, check out my website at www.theferalengineer.com. It justifies me buying the URL before somebody else gets their dirty paws on it. And finally, thank you to all my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.